Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you have watched the previous videos in which I have explained several PLC instructions ranging from latching outputs to timers and from counters to comparison instructions. In this video, we are going to see several mathematical instructions that you may use with Micrologix and SLC PLC. Note that all of the explained instructions will not be present in Micrologix processors. However, SLC processors will have all of these instructions. Mathematical instructions may be used for tasks like addition, multiplication, etc. or may even be used for a bit complex tasks like scaling the data, logarithmic and trigonometric calculations, etc. Specifically, in industry, data coming from analog modules is converted to digits which are later on processed to arrive at any desired output. The table shows several mathematical instructions that may be used as per the situation. The first four instructions are quite simple and are used to perform the operation as suggested by their names. For example, add instruction will take two inputs specified by source A and source B, add both of them and store the result in the destination. Note over here that all instructions that require two source operands may have both operands as addresses or one of them as program constants. Both of the operands cannot be constants. Moving on, the multiply and divide instruction will also work in the same fashion. However, their results are stored in the destination as well as math register. I'll explain where and why the results are stored in the math registers in a bit. The double divide instruction is used after the divide instruction if you want to divide something twice. For example, the first division is achieved by the divide instruction whose quotient is stored in the math register without any rounding and the second revision is achieved by the double divide instruction which divides the contents of the math register by the given divisor. In divide instruction, the quotient that is stored in the destination address is rounded to an integer value, whereas the unrounded quotient is available in the math register. Therefore, achieving double division requires unrounded quotient from the math register. Moving on, the clear instruction can simply clear or reset the contents of the source word to zero and the square root instruction calculate the square root of the source and places the rounded integer result in the destination address. As far as the last instruction of this slide is concerned, that is of scale with parameters, it requires a bit of explaining. Therefore, I'll explain it separately after few slides. In this list, the scale data and the compute instruction will also be explained separately. Therefore, I won't talk about them over here whereas the rest of the instructions are quite self-explanatory. The absolute instruction will calculate the absolute value of the source and place it in the destination, whereas the swap instruction will swap the low and high bytes of a specified number of words in any data file. Moving on are few trigonometric operations that require one source, calculate its trigonometric result, and store the result in the destination address in radians. The arc sine will calculate the sine inverse of the given number, arc cosine will calculate the cosine inverse, arc tangent will give us the inverse tangent, and the cosine instruction will calculate the cosine of the given angle in radians and store the result in the destination address. Few more mathematical instructions listed over here can calculate the natural log, log to the base 10, sine, and tangent of the given source value and store the result in the destination address. The last instruction may be used to calculate x raised to the power of y, for example, 4 raised to the power 3, or any similar calculation. There are few results or pieces of information that are stored in the status register of the PLC. These results are imperative for understanding the results generated by mathematical instructions. The table over here shows first four bits of the word 0 of the status register, called arithmetic status bits. The bit 0 is called the carry bit and it is set if the mathematical operation has generated a carry during calculations. The bit 1 is called the overflow bit and will be set if the actual result present in the math register cannot fit in the destination address. The bit 2 is called the 0 bit and will be set if the result of mathematical instruction yields a 0. And lastly, the bit 4 is called the sign bit that will be set if the mathematical instruction yielded a negative result. Moreover, the bit 0 of word 5 of the status file is called the overflow trap bit. 
and is very useful in avoiding CPU fault during certain situations. This bit is also called minor error bit and will be set if a mathematical overflow or division by zero is detected. Now, if by the end of the program or by the point where the input output addresses are refreshed, this bit is set, a major error of 0020 will be declared and the CPU will be faulted. A simple way to avoid CPU going into a fault is to use an unlatch output instruction with an address of s colon 5 slash 0 that is the minor error bit between the point where such error may occur and the end of the program. This simple trick will save the CPU from being stuck into a faulted state. Moving on, the word 13 and 14 of the status file are called the math register and are used to store intermediate and full results of some of the mathematical instructions. The word 13 contains the least significant word of the 32-bit value of multiply and double divide instructions. Moreover, it also contains the remainder of the divide and the double divide instructions. As for the word 14, it contains the most significant word of the 32-bit result of the multiply and double divide instruction. Moreover, it may contain the unrounded quotient of the divide and double divide instruction. Now let's talk about the three instructions that I said requires a bit of explaining. The instruction of scale with parameters is used to generate output values that has linear relationship with the input values. Or in other words, this instruction can generate output of the straight line equation. A straight line equation is generally expressed as y equals to mx plus b, where y is the output, m is the slope of the line, x is the input, and b represents the offset or the y-intercept. The value of the slope and the offset may be figured out if any two points on the straight line are known. Therefore, for calculation of these two values, that is the gradient and the offset, minimum input, minimum output, Maximum input and maximum output should be provided to this instruction. After calculation of the gradient and the offset, the input value x can be used to calculate the output value y. Another instruction called the scale data instruction may be used to get the scaled input rather more quickly. This instruction requires the value of the gradient as the rate and the offset value. The input is then multiplied with the rate and the offset is added to get the scaled output. However, in this instruction, the rate of the gradient should be between negative 3.2768 and 3.2767. This instruction is used in place of scale with parameter instruction if greater precision is required as this instruction can handle gradient up to fourth decimal place. The last instruction that I am going to discuss is of compute and is one of the most powerful and useful instruction. It may be used to compute any given mathematical or logical expression in one go. So any expression made using these operations can be directly provided to this instruction and it will calculate the result and store it in the destination address. This instruction is normally used when complex mathematical expressions should be solved to arrive at a particular solution and the intermediate results are of no importance. Now let's move to the simulator and see several of these mathematical instructions in action. Okay, so over here I have made a simple ladder diagram that will exhibit the working of add instruction, divide instruction, and square root instruction. I haven't used some other advanced instruction over here because the simulator and the emulator that I am using can only emulate Micrologics 1000 and Micrologics 1100 series PLCs. And these series PLCs, as I have said earlier in the video, doesn't contain all of the mathematical instruction that I have explained. So the first rung will check whether this input is high or not. If it is true, this add instruction will be carried out. And what will happen over here? It will add the content of N7 colon 0 and N7 colon 1 and place the result in the destination address, which is N7 colon 2. If the second switch is turned on, content of source A will be divided by the contents of source B and the result will be stored in the destination address. And as in the last run, if this switch is turned on, this instruction will calculate the square root of the content present in the N7 column 0 location and place the result in the N7 column 2. Now let me run this code and check what is happening. So 
So to check what is happening, I need to open the integer register as well. So let me open it and place it over here. Okay, so right now the contents of n7 colon 0 is 0. Let me change it to let's suppose 15 and the contents of n7 colon 1 is right now 0. So let me change it to 5. So if I turn this switch on, what will happen? These two things will be added up. That is 15 will be added to 5. The result will be 20 and it would be stored in n7 colon 2 location. That is this one. So let me turn this on and see what happens. So you can see that over here 20 has been stored. Similarly, if I turn this off and turn this on, what will happen is contents of source A that is 15 would be divided by the contents of source B that is 5 and the result would be 3 and it will be stored in the destination file which is n7 colon 2. Now if this result doesn't yield an integer output then what will happen? So if I change this value to 4 then the result would be 4 over here. You know that 15 divided by 4 is 3.75. And if you round 3.75 to the nearest integer, it will come out to be 4. So over here, rounded integer values are stored. So that's it for this video. And I will recommend the learners to practice several other mathematical instructions that are present in the simulator and in the SLC PLCs as well. So if you have any questions, I'm always available through email and YouTube comments. Thank you and take care.